In the offshore industry, we work in an extraordinarily demanding, potentially highly dangerous environment. Disasters on the scale of Piper Alpha are mercifully rare, and that's testament to the professionalism of all of us, as we each have a part to play. But in all honesty, we've been lucky too. Major events may be rare, but significant incidents and high potential near misses are common. Too common. If we learn from previous events, we can reduce the likelihood of having a repeat occurrence or a similar event. Dropped objects account for the majority of actual and potential fatalities in upstream oil and gas. And they are also in the top three causes of death and serious injury in many other industrial sectors. Dropped objects are also a serious threat in leisure and home life too. They can occur anywhere and at any time. There are two categories of dropped objects. The first is a static dropped object. This is any object that falls from its previous position under its own weight, that is gravity driven without another applied force. This could, for example, include failures caused by corrosion or improper fixings. The second category is a dynamic dropped object. This is any object that falls from its previous position due to an applied force. For example, a collision involving travelling equipment, snagging on machinery, helicopter downdraft, or severe weather. The dropped object's calculator is used to plot the mass of a dropped object against the distance it falls, to determine the potential severity of the consequences. Let's look at an incident involving a dynamic dropped object. A tote tank was being filled with a chemical for use at an offshore installation. To ensure the valve was closed, the operator tapped it with a hammer. He placed the hammer in the frame and attached the security tags, indicating that the valve was locked. He then completed the cargo summary ticket and the tank was checked by the lorry driver prior to loading and transiting to the dock. At the dock, the lorry was inspected by the cargo gantry inspector, who failed to identify the potential dropped object. The lorry then proceeded to the quayside, where it was unloaded and taken to the crane for loading onto the vessel. At this point, the tank was checked again by the crane banksman, who also failed to notice the potential dropped object. Before it was lifted onto the installation, the tank was checked by the vessel deck crew and once again the potential dropped object was not identified. The vessel deck crew moved to the safe haven, the tank was lifted from the vessel to the installation and was placed in the laydown area ready for use. After use as part of the backload process, the tank was inspected, the container check sheet was completed and again the hammer was missed. The container was lifted from the installation to the supply boat, to the quayside and onto a lorry, again with the checks missing the camouflaged hammer. As the tank was being transported by lorry back to the vendor, the hammer dislodged and fell off the lorry, hitting a car. The hammer went through the windscreen and narrowly missed the driver and his daughter. Several barriers could have prevented this incident happening. Let's look at the barriers that failed. 1. The valve should be operational and not require force from a hammer to close. 2. All tools should be accounted for and checked out and in, and the hammer should never have been placed on the tote tank. 3. Cargo checks must be thorough. They are not just tick box exercises. In this example, six different people who could have prevented this incident failed to identify the potential dropped object. If these barriers had been in place and correctly followed, this incident may have been prevented. Nearly all incidents are caused by failures in one or more of the following areas. Complacency, control of work, culture, competency, change management, communication and commitment.
This is just one significant incident, but maybe we can learn by other people's mistakes. Let's ask ourselves, what is your site's programme to prevent dropped objects? What is your management system for checking out and checking in tools? Consider other potential consequences of a dropped object in this scenario. Can you think of a dynamic dropped object incident that has occurred at your worksite and what could have been done to avoid it? How are you playing your part to identify and prevent dynamic dropped objects? Play your part.